We are your home for Hawaii's music. We are Kappa at 100.3, 99.1, and online at kapparadio.com. Another Aloha Friday and another edition of the Kappa Cafe. We are so excited as we've been talking about it all week. She comes from Hawaii Island. She makes us proud. She's a, I cannot say kiki kayapuni, but a haumanak olelo Hawaii kayapuni of Kekulo Ehunui Kaimelino. Joining us this morning, Hiro Alea. Aloha kekahiaka, Hiro. Aloha. <laughs> Ooh, man. Good to see you guys. <laughs> How is it? Where, where are you? Where are you now? I am living in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. All the way on the East Coast. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Other than Nashville, probably the biggest place to be for the music scene. Yeah, I agree. That's part of the reason why I'm here. So, you know, you know, here we we were sharing a little bit about how um, how you started and, and little memories of you and music and the little that we know. Can you tell everybody just how music started for you um, being home from Hawaii Island? Yeah, so it's funny because I can never kind of pinpoint an exact moment of when I knew music was what I wanted to do. It kind of just always was a part of my life. Um, so I've been singing ever since I was a baby. Um, and I went to, as you said, Kekulo Ehunui Kaimalino, where I have very, very fond memories of music also being a very big thing there. Uh, I mean, we did it every morning for Va, Va Oli. And um, it's just, I just always, I always knew this was the path that God wanted me to go towards. Mm -hmm. And I started to look into how can I, you know, possibly go to music school, but that kind of seemed like out of reach for me. I was like, That's, that kind of seems insane because I'm, I'm living here in Hawaii and I'm comfortable and I don't want to leave my family. Um, so that kind of took us to the journey of just looking through what are the possibilities of if I was to move, where could I go to do music? And we looked at Berkeley College of Music, which is located in Boston. Um, and essentially I just was like, let me just take a leap of faith and apply. And I didn't even think that I was gonna get accepted. I was just like, ah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. And I got accepted and I went to Berkeley and I know I'm like skipping ahead. This is kind of like the whole, my whole journey, but, um, and that's where I met all the friends that I'm still friends with today who actually live here in Atlanta, which is not planned. It just kind of happened that way. And they are my producers and the people that I'm working with now on the music that I am doing as an artist. So wow. It's kind of been like a seamless journey in which I have no idea was going to end up like this. I always hoped that it would involve music and I'm still, I still kind of, there's a bunch of unknowns and I'm still down the journey of figuring out what that actually looks like. But I'm really excited that it seems to go, be going well. So <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also noticing that um, you kind of now sound like how I sounded when I first moved. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get this a lot. <laughs> I honestly get that a lot. And my family makes fun of me every time I come home because I mean, who knows? I didn't always <laughs> talk like this, um, but I think it really messed me up because I moved, I moved from Hawaii to Boston and everybody has that real like you know uh, let's go park the car over there type of <laughs> in the garage <laughs> right right and and then Atlanta is like more southern like a little southern twang it's hot in her and yeah and I feel like I've and my husband is is born and raised in Georgia so he has that natural accent and I'm around him all the time so I feel like those I got Hawaii uh, Massachusetts and, and Atlanta mixed in one. I don't know who I am anymore. The, the, the thing is, is that it it totally fits your 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 voice and your tone. I remember uh, I got to I remember I got to work in the studio with you and Kalamaku, and you guys were 
Uh, oh, like Sage's okay. age. Yeah, you guys are like 10 <laughs> years old or something. And I remember you guys, both of you, especially you already had a soulful, almost urban style of voice. So it, it seems, like you said, seamless that you would go in that direction and it would naturally go that way. Going to, Ber to Berkeley. Now, I play with a bunch of musicians that graduated from Berkeley. And I hear stories. I hear stories of, man, I had to audition five times or I didn't get in or, you know, what was the process like for a vocalist? Cause a little, little bit different. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause I didn't, you know, I, and I also like, what do they train you in, in when you go as a vocalist? Cause you're not playing an instrument. So your voice is the instrument. So what do you, you know, yeah. what are the things you said? I'm glad there? you said that. Cause I was going to say that. I was going to say my, my voice is my instrument, right. but honestly the audition process, um, they don't have any in Hawaii. I don't know if they've changed that since, but I had to travel to Seattle where mm -hmm. I did my audition. It was either Seattle or California. And it was really nerve wracking. It was like an interview moment for like a big job. They put you in a room and then they call your name when it's time for you to go inside of this like auditorium. And there's literally only three people sitting in the auditorium watching you mm -hmm. and and saying you know okay you know what what's your name how old are you why are you here and then go sing a song and then they had some other they had another process which i was super unfamiliar with because i'd never i don't know any type of music theory at that point it was just like i i i sing from the na'o i i know how to do that but i don't know how to read notes that's not my thing so they had an audition process too, where they, I had to have a piece of paper, a sheet and sing, you know, with this music theory sheet in front of me. And I had no idea. I was just like, I did my best, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, I don't know. <laughs> and, and I think I failed that. I probably failed everything. They did like a, uh, uh, I don't know how to, they did like a time thing too where you had to kind of like clap to the beat of mm -hmm. of the sheet um i i failed that too probably the only thing i did not fail in was the singing part so i it could be very i could see how it could be a lot more difficult for musicians mm -hmm. who are actually playing an instrument because that process of having to do theory is probably like the focus of their yeah. audition i have a guitar player friend that went and he said that he had to sit back to back with the instructor and the instructor said, play exactly what I'm playing. Oh yeah. I don't doubt it. Yeah. yeah. They had that energy the whole time too. Nobody smiled. It's like they have a conversation before, like, this is the things we don't do. Everybody mm. make them fear you. That's right. It. Right. Now, another yeah. thing is, um, what, what I, what I found is that when you go there, you know, like, you know, when you cut, when you, you come from your, 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 your hood and you're kind of the star, right. And then you go to this place where everybody is super talented. Like, what is that? What's that feel like where now you're just like in a bunch of people where everybody's over the top. Right. There's, there's two emotions that are always kind of sort of there. Some people will deny it, but the competitive part, is definitely there because everybody's there for the same reason you're a musician or an artist or you can also go there for uh, like music business mm -hmm. so that's also an option um but there is a there is a big com competitive spirit there but i was very surprised because my second year i kind of found my my group of people it was really hard because you know people from hawaii we kind of just are born and raised with our family and friends. We're kind of birthed into already having those relationships. And so it was a new thing for me to, to try to move from Hawaii to the mainland. And it's like dating. You have to date people in order to be like, do I like them? Do they like me? Do they want to be my friend? So it wasn't until my second year at Berkeley where I found kind of my, my group. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't as competitive anymore. It was more like everybody in our group was kind of cheering on each other to do their best. And that's why they were my friends, essentially. <laughs> you know, what's really interesting is that you don't hear many of those stories 
of our local uh, students from Hawaii um, going that route, or maybe it's just not shared enough. Uh, what would you recommend, like for those students that are listening, because graduate it's graduation season back home here. Uh, yeah. What would you, what would you recommend for those that are listening and knowing that you are public school graduate, you are you and you did it. What would you recommend to them? And it's not cheap, so how you know how do you do it? Oh, the cheap side, I mean, you got to do whatever you can to get, you know, the the people to, to help pay for that. I don't know. I Don't ask me about that side. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing that I will say is moving from Hawaii to the mainland is just hard. It is really hard in general, and you're going to have a hard time, and you're going to have for me, I cried every day for the first year that I moved away from home because it's just different in every way. It's hard to find your people. You don't have any Polynesians there, especially if you're going to the East Coast. West Coast, you can kind of get away with finding some mm -hmm. um, Polynesians there, but it was really hard for me. And I think it's there where I actually was able to appreciate a lot of what Hawaii had done for me growing up in my upbringing, because it is very different. Um, so I think that was a big part of my audition process too. I think they saw my spirit because I kept, I kept it real and didn't change who I was, even though they were obviously trying to put on a demeanor of like, we don't care that you're auditioning right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I think that's the biggest thing that I would, I would say for people who are going to school in the mainland is that having a hard time is standard. You're going to have that and you're going to miss home. Um, but it's beautiful too, because you end up appreciating more of where you came from. Mm -hmm. And after that hard period of time, at least for me, I realized this was a really good growth period of my life. Because if it wasn't for me moving and kind of navigating my life without my family, um, I don't think I would be where I am today. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, so Hero, now that you, um, speaking of Berkeley, what is maybe the one thing that you take away from that learning? I mean, I'm sure you learned a lot, but if there's one thing that you took away from going to that school, what would it be? The connections. When I, when I went to the school, I mean, there's a ton of good things that you could say. They provide a bunch of great opportunities, but it's the connections, like the people that I was connected to, including professors, they are the reasons that you would get opportunities because you keep that relationship with them going past just, you know, being at school. But like I said, the people that I am producing with and creating music with today and who are helping me in my artist's journey, they are the same people that I met at Berkeley College mm -hmm. of Music. They also were students at Berkeley College of Music. Oh, awesome. So, and they say the same thing too. Whenever it's it's actually a it's same all around with any Berkeley student that you talk to. Um, at least that my group, they would answer this the same way and say that the biggest thing that they came away with was the connections because they still have those to this day. And if it wasn't for Berkeley bringing all those people, all those musicians of all different backgrounds and cultures together, like it wouldn't be possible. So that is, I'm yeah. super thankful to Berkeley for that. Like <laughs> now, literally. Now being in Atlanta now, has that um, got, uh, maybe shifted uh, the genre that you choose, chose to be in? like being in a more uh, urban community and a Southern community where the music is um, very, uh, uh, you know. Uh, what is that, Jazz? What is that? It's what is well, that? South, <laughs> South, Define South is, that. It's very, it's, very, it's very groove oriented, if you know what I mean. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So in listening to your music, um, I, I hear that's that element of that there, but I also hear you trying to keep parts of home in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked this question because this is something that is new for me that I've actually, I'm still walking through this journey of figuring out my sound, right? Every artist has to have a sound that people kind of click and connect with and be like, oh, Hero Alea equals reggae or mm -hmm. pop or whatever that genre may be. Um, and I always knew growing up, I just, I always knew I wanted to do 
pop. I, I always wanted to do, I was, my ear was always drawn to more of the mainstream pop stream type of music. Of course I had my traditional, I would always listen to my traditional Samoan and Hawaiian um, tunes and I was, I grew up in the luau business. So, you know, we're always drumming and, and jamming on the toere drums and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't until I moved away from Hawaii mm -hmm. and then, you know, started to write my song. This song, Work From Home, that I just came out with, it wasn't written to be a reggae pop tune at first. It was just a pop tune. And then we kind of started to explore. I started to realize I still want that element of like, there's something that needs to be different about me. And what's different about me is my culture. Like mm. to this day, there's not a lot of people who um, are from Polynesia that are doing more mainstream music, but keeping the Polynesian sounds in there, like Tawere drums, or mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. hear that in strictly Polynesian style music, mm -hmm. but you don't really hear that in like mainstream mm -hmm. um, music. So I, I then like through listening to like Latin pop and, and associating like, oh, you can still associate this pop tune, but it's, but it's Latin because all of the Latin sounds that are in there. Um, and I started to think, oh, that would be so cool if um, I could do that, but with the Polynesian sounds. Because all of my musician friends here just have no idea what a toere drum is. They've never seen it. They've never heard it. And I was the first person to introduce that to them and, you know, was clicking on YouTube videos like, oh, listen to this. this, is this. And they were freaking out like, this is so cool. Like, I've never heard this before. Um, so just, I have a, I have a, I have a sample library for your producers. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> no, but that's also part of the problem is nobody here plays, you know, Polynesian anything. They don't even know anything about Polynesia in general. Um, so sending you a sample pack. So anybody who has samples out there with Toyota drums, send it my way. You may be in the song. <laughs> I, I even, I really, I even secretly recorded Kumu over here uh, playing Pahu that I could say. Ah, okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Pahu, Pahu is very yes. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big. You know, I'm a, I'm a big. I, I dream big. So. Absolutely. Who, who, knows, who knows what's actually going to happen down the line, but it would just be so cool to, to give, you know, uh, to just have more people around the world hear what Polynesian sounds sound like. Because even working in stuff like Logic or just the, the, the stuff that my producers use where you click and you try to find sounds and put it on the chat. There's just nothing there that has anything to do with Polynesian sounds. So it's just a Uncle whole- Uncle has a whole library for you. you have, yeah, I know you're, your you're library. Good. You're good now, you're good to go. <laughs> yes. So I just want that to be more of a heard mm -hmm. sound. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What about you know, the- until I moved away till, you... till I wanted to actually do that. Are you going to move forward with this thought of incorporating um, Polynesian sounds in your music? Are you, or is that just going to be, you know, a few in between here and there? Um, and do you think this is, this is the genre? So um, it is not the last, like this is not the last tune that has Polynesian sounds on it. I, we're working on one right now that's supposed to be released uh, in the beginning of June, and that also has Toyota drums in it. So I'm thinking that from here on out, it's not Polynesian focused, like it's not a, mm -hmm. you know, traditional Polynesian song, but it, it it's mainstream pop music. And each song has Polynesian flair. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now tell everybody how they can get music, they can follow you, um, and all that good stuff. Yes. So all around the board for social medias, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook, it's Hero, H-E-R-O, Alea, A-L-E-A. The funny thing too is, is I know I don't have to even explain that to you guys over here. I always have to be like, Alea, not Aaliyah, yeah. you know, because <laughs> they don't use the vowels. Anyways. Big 
speaking of speaking of that, are you dealing with hey, who's the new Mexican girl? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but mostly in Boston, everybody thought I was. They, they mm. would just speak Spanish to me. They wouldn't even ask. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, wow. Um, and Hero, Hero Alea on all streaming platforms. I have a new song out called Work From Home. Um, that will be on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever platform that you choose to listen to my song, Work From Home by Hero Alea. Do you want to send a, do you want to send a, say hi to anybody while you're kind of virtually in, in on Big Island right now? <laughs> yes. Hello to my family, Shannon and Luki Wuching. Those are my awesome parents. They still reside in Hawaii. Thank goodness. And I get to come and visit hopefully soon. Thank you to my Island Breeze family out there. I love you guys and my Ehunui family. I still love you guys and I miss every single one of you. <laughs> and I'll be back soon. Awesome. I need my ocean. Yes, yes, yes. One last thing, Hero. Like you said, what is the one thing you miss outside of the ocean? Is there anything you absolutely miss? It can't count family because we know family. What is the one thing that you just can't get in Georgia? Just the good, oh no, delicious food. <laughs> A food. The Hawaiian style <laughs> plate of everything I desire every day. I want the poke and the poi and the lomi salmon and everything, but they have none of that there. So if right. you guys have any good recipe, <laughs> send it my way. <laughs> Thank you, Hero, for joining us today. And of course, don't forget to follow her, heroalea.com, and you can get all the music on all platforms and continue to follow your journey and support Kira Alea Music. Yes, thank you.